So I did this very little discussion and presentation today for my second channel, but as I'm now uploading it, I'm realizing a lot of you guys might have forgotten I have a second channel. So we'll put it here instead and remind you all, remember, there is WB2. For now though, enjoy, as with most things on that channel, this is nothing major, but it's cool. So, while everybody over on the main channel enjoys the Super Adventure Box today, and the gameplay for that will be continuing, a lot of you have been asking me to make a video about something else, which, you know, I wasn't really thinking I'd do, but, yeah, as you can tell from the title, I won something pretty cool today. Uh, today is the day of the monthly automated tournament in PvP. Now, just in case, as I suspect you don't know what that is, dear viewer, every month in PvP, if you've been playing the daily tournaments, that being Grent's Game, Melange's Matchup, Lissa's Legions, uh, and Balthazar's Brawl. If you win these, you can get qualifying points. If you can collect 100 qualifying points in a month, which is very easy, a single one of these daily wins gives you 50, all right? So you do two, and loads of them rotate every day. If you get these qualifying points at the end of the month, once per month, everyone, game-wide, comes together in a massive tournament. That's Cormier's Clash. And this has ludicrous, epic rewards. It's kind of the main thing for PvP at the moment, outside of side-organized uh, community efforts, of which there are some. This is the main arena net supported thing that goes on every month, and it has some really awesome rewards most PvEers don't know anything about. Namely, the top of the list is this thing here, the Gizmo. Uh, so this month it was the Champion Storm. I'll talk more about this stuff in a second. You'll notice, yeah, that's 500 gold. That's not 500 gold split across your team. That's 500 gold directly to you if you win with the 100 coins on top and so on. Anyway, so as a lot of you probably know at this point, I play a lot of Guild Wars 2. I would definitely consider myself a big Guild Wars 2 player. But do I spend that time in PvE? Do I spend all that time RPing in Divinity's Reach? Do I spend that time in raids or fractals? World versus world? No, 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 no. What I do in Guild Wars 2 that I do a lot in Guild Wars 2, I'm coming up on my 10,000th game at the moment. Uh, so if we go to my uh, PvP section, I'm on 8,700 now. What do I do? I PvP. I really, really love the PvP. I always have, though I've taken very large breaks from it in the past. Uh, and I've never actually done a monthly until this one, uh, which was pretty fun. So I was very fortunate. I, I wouldn't really consider myself to be someone who has a team. Um, and I don't really want to talk about the games themselves too much. I was fortunate enough to uh, queue in with some very good players. And uh, my role in general was to be a 1v1 or a duelist, a side noder. Specifically within the realm of side noding, I, I have a preference for taking home back noding. I watch mid and let people snowball to far, but generally I'll be 1v1ing or closer over the midpoint. That's what I do. I know my role. People have an expectation of what I do as I play. And uh, yeah, just doing that, I queued into the monthly today and for our way to semis. It was very cool. We actually got kicked out of the tournament by the winning team. So if I come back to the tournament tab here for Cormier's Clash, you can actually look at match history and see what happened. So uh, I'm this team here at the bottom under the account name Valen. That was one of the players I was with who originally assigned us to the tournament. We weren't in a guild. We didn't have a guild team or a guild name or a guild logo and stuff. Sadly, very few people do that. Thankfully, the winning team does that and a couple of others do. I encourage everyone to, really. Uh, but yeah, we fought our way to semis. We got kicked out by the winners. This team here, Team USA, they're like the de facto NA team, have been for a long time. And I think the scene's really lucky that, like so many others, they're still consistently and diligently doing it every single month. They've got literally years of experience and communication and understanding on top of everyone else and effort. Uh, and other teams kind of really struggle to go up against them. So that, that, that's what I got kicked out by today. But aside from that, won every fight that we came across. And it was really a lot of fun. Now, the thing with the video is I want to express to you guys, you might not expect me as being someone that can do very well in these tournaments. And I think that's perfectly reasonable to think about. Uh, you know, I, I, my priorities in the game often lead you to believe I care more about story and so on. And yet here I am. And the reason I kind of wanted to do the video was to talk about the rewards and maybe encourage or inspire a few of you to actually try it out. Because trust me, you can do a lot better than you'd expect. So what did I get? I was really excited. And here's the reason I wanted to do the monthly. Because I wanted this, okay? The mini bronze llama, all right? So uh, if you're a very diligent watcher of my streams, you'll know how this works. But there's kind of a weird prestige crafting system within Guild Wars 2 you don't know about. I can almost guarantee you don't know about. 
Uh, so first of all, there is the PvP armor sets. There's like four different sets at this point. You can build all the way up to legendary. As for all that stuff, I've got that easily. I've had that for ages now. There's also a very expensive and time-consuming set of weapons now, which are the obsidian weapons. Do you remember obsidian armor from Guild Wars 1? Well, Guild Wars 2 has a PvP prestige equivalent. They're the obsidian weapons. I have every single obsidian weapon. have for a while now. Some people don't like these because they don't look too good. But yeah, so I've got those. Uh, and then lastly, so those are some of the rewards. Then you've got minis. So I don't know why ArenaNet did this, but kind of the mascot for PvP mini rewards is llamas. I don't know why they pick llamas, but you can find llamas all around the new Heart of the Mists. You can find llamas on little islands. There's an achievement to collect them and stuff. I think this was probably a bit of a misfire. I would have preferred some kind of cooler creature as the mascot for Guild Wars 2 PvP, PvP, but whatever. So these are largely time-gated rewards that you basically buy a llama, and then you get more llamas over time, and you can craft those llamas into higher tier ones in the Mystic Forge and roll up and up and up. So, you know, I've been trying to go for all the rewards, right? And I've got basically all the rewards in PvP. Uh, so there's three types of llamas really, really you can go for. You can go for regular lava llamas that eventually you turn into like the lavish emperor with a crown and stuff. Every time you tear it up, it gets a new accessory. Then there's the black llamas, which you can continue tearing up. Then there's the princess and pink llamas, which you can tear up until it's a full-on like medieval princess thing with a tutu and a, and a hat. And this one's pretty uh, well known. Uh, I think the rarest of the llamas that's openly accessible to the player base is this guy. There were only like 14 people or something in the game when I made this that had this llama. Maybe it was a little bit more than that. Uh, but so that's llama crafting. And then you'll notice I've got lots of them. There's a couple left for me to get. But then there's three rows. There's a row of llamas down here. These are bronze llamas. There's a row of llamas up here. These are silver llamas. And there's a row up here. These are gold. The only way to access this whole crafting tree of llamas is to get the first one on the list, bronze, via a tournament. You can only get access to this once per month by placing fourth place or higher. Then you get bronze. If you get second place, you can get a silver llama and begin that crafting tree. And if you get first, which basically no one except that one team I mentioned, on uh, uh, NA at least, and then there'll be a separate team in tandem on EU that does it, you can go for the gold crafting. So these three types of llama, the bronze, the silver, and the gold, are you just don't see people with these. Not just the time it takes to understand the kind of obscure crafting method in the Mystic Forge, but just to even be a player that won them in the first place and got that in the first place. Uh, so I've wanted these, you know, I've got the other llamas, I'm ready for it. And so I played this monthly specifically to get two semis, to get to fourth or higher, so I can start my bronze llama crafting tree. That's what I did, and so that's one of the things I won here. So now when I unlock this bronze one, Feels pretty good. What that's done is meant that a tab over at this vendor, which most players never use, uh, is it this tab? One of these tabs, they sell additional llamas now, but you can, here you go, this one here, but it, it's locked unless you get the first, and I just got my first, so there you go, I can now purchase new llamas as soon as I get the tickets from the next season. So that's badass. And then, hey, maybe one day I'll go for the silver llama and the gold one. So that's really one of the main things I was going for. And, uh, yeah, I was really happy. I got a lot of gold from it as well. Uh, how much did I win on Cormis Clash here? Uh, they gave me 250 gold. They gave me this large potion of PvP rewards. You don't get these from anything else either. Uh, but this gives you like a ton of chests, which is nice for my PvE progression on Thunderhead Peaks. This is how I'm getting Dragon's Blood weapons at the moment. Um, and so, yeah, getting lots of shards from that was kind of nice. And uh, Mystic Coins, I guess, is reasonably fun, but... You know, I'm alright for money at the moment. PvP, you know, there's 3,000 gold. A lot of this is from selling a Queen Bee, but generally speaking, you're always going to be quite lush if you PvP. So the, the Mystic Coins are okay. But then, here's the last thing that I got. Uh, was some tournament vouchers here. Champion's Rest Pass. So, um, you guys are probably familiar with lounges. You know, they just started selling Armistice Bastion, a World vs. World lounge. Um... And you've got, like, the Fractal one, widely regarded as very good. You've got the original Div uh, uh, Divinity's Reach one. You've got the Airship and Gendaran. Well, PvPers have a lounge too. And it's a really cool one, actually, because it's on the map. So you've probably wandered around, right? This is where you fight the class trainers, the golems, uh, the, you know, the, the dodge trainer and stuff. Here's where I've been wandering around now. Basic services and most players spend all their time here. Then you've got this island, okay? Now, this island is the arena to brawl in. But 
um, so a lot of people don't really know this, at the back of the brawling area, so this is the brawling section itself, you might not have seen for a while, it got updated a few months ago to be a lot bigger. Up there is actually some other stuff going on. It's a huge chunk of the island that most players are not allowed access to. So you just saw I came up here on a Springer. When this was all originally implemented, don't forget mounts weren't there yet, so they kind of don't want you to do that in the first place. But coming all the way up here, if I hadn't just won in this tournament to where I did, I would have hit an invisible barrier and been told to piss off, basically. So I've spent Christ knows how many hundreds of hours in the Hearts of the Mist playing PvP, playing my preferred favorite part of the game. And I've never been allowed into this part of the map, ever. And I'm an explorer at heart, and I enjoy finding these places. And, you know, you'll occasionally watch someone stream and they'll be wandering around here. But a lot of the really big PvPers don't seem to care too much about the rewards they get, and they don't really show these places off. So no one's ever really given a satisfying, you know, high graphics tour of this area, as far as I've seen. And now I have access. So, yes, uh, here's how it works. You get an item uh, called the Champion's Rest Pass. And there's an ascended version if you do some of their special like 2v2 tourneys or the Tournament of Legends and stuff. I got the uh, gold one. It has an expiration, but there's some quirky stuff about that that maybe I'll leave to the side for now. Uh, but, but yeah, basically, anytime I double click it, I now get access to this whole new area of Heart of the Mist. People wanted me to do a video to kind of express, number one, that you guys can get this too. And it's, it's you know, a lot of fun and actually more within your reach than you might expect. But also, uh, you know, just to see it and... Uh, see me exploring it, I guess, and sort of show it off. So you've got this cool kind of map here. I don't know whether that's a repeat asset from somewhere else. It reminds me a bit of Forest, but it's not Forest. I'm not quite really sure what's going on there. Maybe there's some other really special stuff here, because to be honest, before doing this video, I haven't really shown... Uh, I haven't done too deep of a dive into every asset. Like, look at this here as well. Uh, but yeah, it's a cool place, because not only is it just for exploration, but it's got services that are deliberately left out from elsewhere in Heart of the Mists. Heart of the Mist doesn't have crafting, for example. And I'm not going to sit here in this video and say, oh, it needs crafting, blah, 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 because clearly it's a very populated map anyway. And it's good to push PvPers out into open world while they uh, uh, sit in queue, in my opinion. So having other services elsewhere is a good idea. But uh, you get duplicate of everything else. So there's a new PvP browser I can speak to here. There's uh, an arena vendor here. I think there would be a duplicate one elsewhere. But I get extra stuff. I get uh, vendors for pretty much anything I could imagine. There's a Laurel guy here. There's bank, trading posts. And then if you walk along this tunnel, which has little launch pads in it that I didn't know about. Actually, I think I might have seen them once, right? But there's launch pads all around. Don't forget, this came around well, actually quite a bit later than the Lion's Arch update. But look, there's like a, a destructible desk here. But not really destructible, I guess. I mean, I can do damage to it and try and break it. Right? There's just all these weird quirks here. We've got a uh, makeover preview guy. Access to activities. Now, this is actually really hype. What you got to remember, guys, is very few players get access to this lobby. This, though, means if you're an achievement grinder and you want to get keg brawl achievement progress, you can actually queue into keg brawl or whatever it is of that day that you don't have achievements yet on, like Sp Sanctum Sprint, very quickly when hopping out of your queues. Because other w what will happen usually is if you're in an activity and you trigger a queue, it kind of doesn't work, right? But this is basically a little bit more accessible, as far as I can tell. I might be wrong about that, actually. Does, does being in an activity mean you can't queue at all? It might not. This is really cool. Okay, so these are three panels. There's a fire console, a monster console, and a wave console. You might remember a dev live stream they were talking about this ages ago. Basically, down there where everyone brawls. That is not meant to be a 1v1 area. It's meant to be a free-for-all brawling place. That's sort of a rough approximation of what a game would be like. It's not like for pure 1v1s. And people will come in and mess up your pure 1v1s if you try and treat it that way. If you want pure 1v1s, maybe go to a custom arena, right? So, in the spirit of this being a brawling, chaotic experience down there, people who get this pass, and there's very few people that have done that, um, can actually trigger these consoles to down where everyone's fighting do things so there i just spawn you see all this lava here i did that that was me and it does damage to people that are down there and i can kind of just keep spamming lava on them this one's really cool you can spawn monsters okay so you know you've got chieftain and svana and the forest of nifar you can spawn them in there look so now there's ai running around cc'ing people and doing crazy stuff can you see the bear there chasing this player i just spawned that bear right it's really cool i like this a lot and you never see people utilizing these i actually made a joke in map chat when i got this pass saying look i'm a pve -er, and so now there's going to be a thousand hours of pve available here 
uh, as I trigger it. And, you know, when they kill the monster, you can uh, trigger it again. It goes orange here and sort of charges up while you're waiting for its cooldown. You can't spam them too much. Uh, and then lastly, you can trigger Taquato-style waves that splash. Here you go. You see that there? Through, they do a little bit of damage to people, but then a bit of blowout, knockdown or something as they catch everyone. You see everyone got knocked over there? And I could just kind of stand here spamming this and, um, you know, watching the results. I think it's fun. And I, I could probably imagine spending a lot of time now just standing here in, uh, in this champion's rest location triggering these consoles. Uh, what other fun stuff? Well, they have the sittable chairs as well. I liked this when the devs did the, the update last, or about a year ago now. Um, they made chairs sittable, obviously. And they thought to do it for, you know, quite a, a fringe at the moment part of the community uh, to sit in these chairs. And one of the reasons I'm doing this video is not just to say, oh, barely anyone's here. I, I want to encourage you guys to try and play a bit more. And we could see a place like this fill up a bit more, you know. Uh, but yeah, as you come along, uh, again, there's, there's jump pads. So you can move quite quickly. You've got a little fountain. Um, and then finally we get to the crafting stations here. So uh, I, as far as I've seen, there's no NPC that actually offers, you know, curated dialogue. For example, I have the Verdant Brink Lounge, which was a, one of the weirder lounges they implemented during Season 3. And when you go there, you can actually get a little bit of vaguely interesting dialogue uh, about Verdant Brink from that cave in an NPC that's not associated with the server. It's just there to speak to. Uh, they didn't do that here. But uh, that doesn't surprise me since so few P PvPers care about the lore and the world and stuff. So I did do my check there for that. Um, uh, and yeah, this is kind of the back of the island. As you can see now, we've explored all the way along here. And uh, you come out to the back. So yeah, it's a really, really cool little feature. Um, and uh, a cool reward, I think. I don't know what I'm happier with. Probably the Bronze Llama, <laughs> to be honest. I, I, that was the main thing I was going for. Got the Llama, but got several hundred gold richer and uh, the Champion's Rest. So yeah, I'm now in Champion's Rest. Um, it's been fun. And uh, some people wanted me to share it. I thought it'd be cool. That's the video. Hope you guys enjoy. And uh, don't be scared to try the next monthly. Oh, uh, one of the things I was going to say, I was almost going to uh, wave and leave there, is obviously the big reward for the monthlies are these things. So the Champions Storm a second ago. These are gizmos, okay? They're a special type of uh, cosmetic that you don't equip as regular armor. You know how you get auras for your infusions and stuff? It's a bit like that, right? What they do is they appear as hot keyable things in your novelties. And they're in, like, uh, maybe this section. There's actually a ton of extra things here that the devs are hiding from you. They're in the game, but you don't know about them until you win them. Only the winners get these. And they're these beautiful things. I learned today that you can change the color of gizmos with certain skills like Rampage to make them, like, look more red. It was the storm boat this time. It's got a really beautiful sound of a storm that you can play to people when you trigger it. Really nice animation. Apparently, if you look really closely at it, you can see a secret monster under the depths. Um... But yeah, like, so I didn't get this. This is only for first place. But, you know, that's that's a really big reward from doing these as well. Um, and, uh, and so, yeah. All right, there you go. That's, that's it. That's me done rambling. Hope you guys enjoy. And seriously, really, give these a shot. It's a lot of fun. And you've got all month to practice and get your friends to join you. See you next time. Guys.